Hey, what is going on? Welcome back, Sasebo. You just heard Hey Brother by the late, great Avicii. But hey, guys, it is 7.30. It is Monday, and that means that it is time for CMC Morning Chat. So, of course, I am right here with Master Chief Johnson. How's it going, Master Chief? Doing great. How about you? Oh, I'm fantastic. How was your weekend? It was good. I completely vegged out on the couch and watched TV. Uh... And then I also always go to church, so it was good. It was good for me and Dory. Oh yeah, good service. Yeah, great right. service, always. Very nice. Hey, have you made it down to Nagasaki at all? Yeah, I, I saw it, since I've been in Japan for so long, I made it down there a couple times, uh, mainly just checking out the Peace Park. Yeah, actually, I went down there for uh, the first time this weekend, and you know, I just took a stroll through town, checked out the Peace Park and everything. I didn't know they actually had a tower. What is it, like a little statue, a little tower, kind of uh, erected exactly where you know. Um, where the bomb had detonated and things like that. And it's really just an interesting place to go. It's full of history. There's tons of cool monuments there and stuff. Just great things to see. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're stationed in Japan, you have got to get down to Nagasaki to mm -hmm. check that out. Highly recommend. Plus, it's super easy to get there. You can just walk on over to the train station, head on down there. You know, like the city is not massive, so you can walk through it. They even have like a little trolley system that goes through. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and... Uh I don't know. I, I've every time I've gone there, I've just driven. It takes me about an hour and fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a huge parking garage you can park in, and, and it's good stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you do uh, drive down there, I do recommend that you take the southern route, not the northern route, because the northern route, the tolls are like four times more expensive. Yeah, I think. Man, I, I, I really, I guess I never really paid attention to mm -hmm. what route I, t I took, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, is is the the southern route? Where the, where you're along the water the entire time? Basically, or, yes. Okay, yeah, good deal. Good so the deal. southern route, it only costs like, I think like five or six dollars. I don't know. I went down there on my motorcycle. It only costs like two bucks. So I think it's only like five bucks if you take your car or something like that. And it's only like 15 minutes longer. But if you take the northern route, it costs like $25 in tolls. And it's only like 15 minutes quicker. Yeah, definitely take the southern route if we've got that right. Mm -hmm, of course. All right, so uh, let's get right into it with some good order and discipline. Right now we're talking about cell phones and sailors. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the Navy uh, really is trying to be good with us and let us have our cell phones and things like that. Uh, but they also put some rules on those on these cell phones. And uh, what I'm specifically going to talk about right now is uh, walking and talking on your cell phone. Uh, I've told you before, you can't have the headphones in there where, where, you, where you can talk and do that stuff. But uh, when you're walking and talking on, on your cell phone, it's really important that you have it in your left hand. So you're able to salute with your right hand if you come across an officer or, uh, or somebody you have to salute. Oh, really? I didn't even know that you could talk on your phone while you were in uniform and stuff like that. Because uh, at my last command, they didn't even let us do that. Yeah. on uh, you know, So f a little while ago, the Navy came out and said, hey, we'll allow you to wear them on your belts. Uh, but you need to wear it abaft a beam, which is basically uh, behind where, where you can't see it. Uh, on your uniform when you're looking at you from the front. And then they talked about how you could uh, how you could walk and talk as well. But if you come to a situation where you have to salute an officer, you're supposed to drop the phone and then provide the salute and then uh, continue on. And obviously with that salute comes a greeting. Mm -hmm. Of course. Good info. Did you say a baft a beam? A baft a beam. I, I know it's a crazy, it's a, it's a Navy term. Uh, it's basically, you know, the beam of a ship is the sides of the ship, mm -hmm. and so a baft is behind uh, the side of the ship. I guess is is what is what it what it refers to. Interesting. My five years have never heard that one before. I'd be like, what does that mean? But all right, so that's what it means. It needs to be behind you, people. So we are quickly approaching the deadline for uh, the Type Threes, NWU Type Threes. Yeah. So I put that on my list this morning because I still see some folks walking around their uh, NWU Type Ones, the blue. Uh, uh, camouflage uniform and uh, I, I have some left still and I, I actually wore them for a while just because I wanted to get the most out of these uniforms that, that, that we have to buy with our, our clothing allowance but uh, 1 October of 2019 uh, the NWU Type 3 becomes the official Navy uniform and so everybody needs to make sure that they've got their uniform ready uh, when that comes around because the blue uniform uh, the NWU Type 1 will no longer be authorized for wear Absolutely. Yeah, you got a little bit of you got like a month to do that. So if you want to go out, purchase that, and take it over to uh, the uniform shots, so they can get everything sewn on and all that stuff. Okay, you don't want to be late with that. All right, the next thing we're talking about is BEQ living cleanup. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's funny. I, I had to put this on there because every week, uh, myself and the commanding officer, as well as the triads from other commands, are supposed to go take a look at the BEQ, and. Uh, 
we go over there and take a look, and some of the things we find once in a while, there's, it's amazing how sailors are living. Uh, back when I came up, you know, I had my small rack on the ship, and that was it. Uh, that's what I had to keep clean. Uh, the sailors these days have it really well in being able to get these bear shrooms. And so what I'm asking is, I need you to keep them clean, everybody. Uh, it's a privilege to live in there. You get a lot better accommodations than what I got back in the days. And so it's just simple, you know, housekeeping and, and keeping, keeping, yourself, keeping your room clean, uh, taking the trash out daily. Uh, we, go, we go and look, and uh, I'm sure that they'll find, I'll find some instances where I'm going to have to get some people out of there because they're just not living right. Absolutely. I got some horror stories from uh, back when I used to live in the <laughs> barracks in my last command. Actually, I moved in. And the very next day, we failed a, unit or a room inspection. I was like, well, what do you want me to do? I moved in yesterday. <laughs> but, you know, that's just how it is. You know, sometimes just have those roommates that you got to keep in check, you know? Yeah. Things like that. All right. And uh, so we're talking about also now how hot it is, right? And staying hydrated and everything like that, because I'm sure everyone notices it's crazy hot outside. Yeah. So we've just come upon the months in Sasebo where it's going to be at its hottest level. And if you follow AFN or the Weather Channel, you'll notice that the humidity has been significantly high. Uh, so it's super important that when you're out there doing your PT or, or just for in general, just to make sure you keep your hydration levels up. Uh, I drink 24 ounces about every hour. You know, that's probably going above and beyond, but it's just really important that you, uh, you keep your hydration up, uh, especially during PT and, and command events. Mm -hmm. I have to always monitor the weather and stuff for the radio. And it's usually sitting around 80 to 85 degrees every day. But with the humidity, it's hitting close to like 95, 100 degrees, you know, with that. And uh, it's pretty much not enjoyable, especially if you don't have AC in your house. Like I only have two AC units, so I'm just laying in my bedroom, which doesn't have one, just sweating. I got fans on me all night and it's still pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, man, it's it's. Uh and, and, and do you live out in town? I do, yes. Yeah, out in town. Uh, when I was here the first time, I lived out in town. And uh, the way I understood it is the Japanese do not build their houses with insulation. And so during the summer, it's going to be hot unless you keep the, uh, the AC blaring. And during the winter, it might be a little cold because, you know, it's not, there's not that insulation like we have in the United States uh, built homes uh, that have that insulation. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. When I first moved in, it was pretty cold. And now it's just, it is so hot in there. I keep the windows open all the time. You know, you got to watch for mold. Mold's a big issue here. Oh, I didn't yeah. really, like, I used to live in Hawaii when I was younger. And I figured it wouldn't be a big deal. It's humid there too. But mold is different here. Like, it grows everywhere. So Yeah, to... it's funny that you say that. You know, I've seen a few ice comments about mold. Uh, and housing gives us these dehumidifiers to try and help eliminate that. I guess I'm really lucky. I have not experienced that yet in my in my house, and uh, I don't know if it's the temperature I keep, but you know, I, I really I'm glad I haven't experienced it yet. Mm -hmm, yeah, I mean, I keep the windows. I don't I don't think I've closed the windows of the doors the in the past like two months. Dehumidifier is always running. Always clean the drains like once a week just to make sure you know you don't want anything like that, especially like food and stuff that you put in the trash. That stuff will mold if you don't put it in a little bag and take that out regularly. So does housing give you dehumidifiers? It does, yes. Town? Oh, nice. Yes. So they do They do take care of our out-in-town residents. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. Good setup. Pretty good setup. But that does it for a good order and discipline. Right now, we're going to take a little break, and then we'll be right back with what's going on in Big Navy. So hey, right now, here is Sale by AWOL Nation. Hey, what is going on? Welcome back, Sasebo. So if you're just tuning in, I am here with Master Chief Johnson. We just got done talking about good order and discipline. Now we are talking about what is going on in Big Navy. And we got something pretty big coming up here on Wednesday, don't we, Master Chief? Yeah, so my first radio show, I kind of talked about this a little bit because uh, it was getting close. Uh, well, now I can say it's here. So on the 31st of July at midnight, uh, triads will have the Chief Petty Officer results and uh, depending on how your command does that, if, you know, if, if, uh, if the command mass chief calls or if the CO calls, uh, you may be getting a phone call in the middle of the night if you're uh, up for chief and selected. Or some people do like to uh, wait until the morning and, and let you sweat it out a little bit. But yeah, that's, that's uh, super exciting. Uh, if, if, if most of you know that when you make chief, it's a huge milestone in the Navy. Uh, you sh your uniform shifts, your life shifts, your focus on leadership shifts a lot. And uh, it's, it's a great thing. And uh, it's a fun season that 
and we're, we're getting ready to train some new chiefs and get them on their way here soon. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I wish uh, everyone luck who out there who is eligible. You know, hopefully you're clear your name on Wednesday and hopefully you're ready for chief season here coming up. All right, moving on. Let's talk about this new uniform mobile app. What's going on with that, Master Chief? Hey, so not to I think about October of 2017, the Navy released a uh, Navy uniform app. It's a pretty awesome app. You know, I, I put it on my phone so that if I'm going to any uh going to any events or anything, I, I can I can do a quick look up and make sure that my uniform looks right. Well, they recently updated that app, and uh, it's uh, now it's called My Navy Uniforms, and it hit uh, stores on July 18th, and uh, it's it's actually one of the more popular apps that sailors have, uh, probably so they can correct me when I correct them in uniforms. They can pu- they can pull it right up and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, which is fine, which is fine. But uh, yeah, Robert Carroll, who uh, runs the Navy Uniform Board, uh, said there's two uh, main things about this app. So we, he added Chapter 2 on grooming standards, and uh, he added Chapter 5 on identification badges and award, identif- identification badges, awards, and insignia. And uh, he did all this based on feedback from sailors. Uh, so I just want to hunker in on feedback real quick. If you have the opportunity to provide your command feedback or provide the Navy feedback, please do so because uh, we listen and uh, we make changes based on, on, on some of the comments and the feedback you give to us. Yeah, mobile app. Geez, we were really living in the 21st century here. I wish I knew about this a couple of years ago. I remember back when they first made it allowed so that uh, sailors could what they could shave like parts into their hair, right? Yeah. And everyone wanted to say that was against regulations. I remember everyone was always bringing around the uh, the reg in their pocket, you know, written on paper, just to, like show people so they didn't have to go shave all their hair off and stuff. But I mean, now if you can just get an app on your phone, you don't even need to do all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that is great. So now we got the 2019 personnel. And policy changes here coming up. What's going on with that, Master Chief? So on the 25th of July, the, the United States Navy blog, is uh, they, they basically took all this information and they put it into one into one area so that you could just go to it and check it out. And so uh, basically, if you're looking for your next billet, if you're looking about exam requirements, uh, if you can apply for different, different pay grades, uh, this blog is for you. And... Uh, they just got it all in one place, and it's it's at the Navy Live blog. Uh, if you do a Google search for that, that'll come up, and it just lists all of the things. But, you know, so much policy comes out in the Navy all the time that sometimes it is difficult to stay ahead. And uh, so this was probably as, a, as a, uh, some feedback came from sailors as well and said, hey, there's so much. How do we figure this out? And, uh, and so they, they consolidated and put it all in one place. Uh, that way, they make it easier for us to go get the information. So check that out. That is so true. There is so much stuff you got to know. And there used to be so many different places you had to look. But I guess that makes things way more convenient now. Yeah. Everything's just going right online. Yep. Of course. All right. We got summer safety coming up here. What is going on with that? Hey, so, you know, during this time, we always focus on safety. And we talk about heat stress and barbecues and all the things that come along with summer, the beaches and things like that. Hey, but uh, we really want you to remember that, you know, suicide prevention during the 101 critical days of summer is super important as well. And this, for me, this goes hand in hand with what I always talk about with helping each other and uh, taking care of each other as a family. Uh, and so there's, there's some key elements here that go along with summer safety that also have to do with suicide. And the first thing is alcohol. You know, uh, when people drink alcohol, uh, it kind of reduces their inhibitions to what's going on around them. And if they're dealing with a hard time, uh, drinking that alcohol can cause them to feel more suicidal or want to do something, you know, that that could harm themselves. The other thing is uh, trying to keep uh, access to lethal means uh, to a minimum. So things like firearms and medications, things of that nature, you know, if you know of your shipmates that have things going on, uh, you know, you you want to be looking out for them. Make sure we we limit their access to those things. And then, of course, really important with uh, summer is, uh, you know, staying connected with family and friends. And that goes hand in hand with suicide prevention, you know, and making sure that you stay connected with your friends and your family and really just know, you know, Knowing them and knowing their mannerisms and, uh, and how they act on a day-to-day basis so you can catch it if you see them shift in their mindset or, or, or the way they're acting. 
Absolutely. This is so important. You know, if you spend any good amount of time in the military, you know, like, you've probably seen this firsthand. I know that I have personally, and it's just, you need, you need to be out there for everyone. You need to look after your friends. You know, they're basically all your family, especially while you're out here. So, you know, if you notice anything, get them the help they need. Listen to them, you know, be someone that they can rely on because that's what we all need. You know, we're all just people out here. Yeah. And if you see anybody uh, who, who is in your shop or in your division, it's that way, you know, there's there's a simple acronym like we use in the Navy that that you should uh, you should know. And it's ask, care and treat. And uh, the bottom line is that ask. You just want to ask them straight up. Are you thinking of killing yourself? Uh a lot of people like think it's crazy, you know. Oh man, I don't want to, you know, like beating around the bush. Don't beat around the bush. You want to ask them straight up. Uh, the care part is you caring about them and making sure they know that you're gonna you're gonna keep them safe and you're gonna help help them out. And then the treat is it's a uh, it's standard. You know, uh, we got to get them over to medical to get them to the professionals to help them get that get that treatment. So act, ask, care, treat. Absolutely. You know, especially in today's day and age, you know, like there isn't that stigma with mental health that there used to be. Like nowadays, everyone just wants to be supportive and like help each other out. You know? yeah, absolutely. Like absolutely. We're, we're done with all that. We want to move past it. We just want to help each other. Yep. And the last thing on my list this morning, just is, again, GI Bill benefits, you know, uh, the 21st of July, uh, Military Times published another thing about GI Bill. You know, so if you're interested in, in using the GI Bill, Go check out that Military Times article, and uh, it'll give you everything, the ins and outs, and what you, what you need to do with uh, how to use your GI Bill. Absolutely. And thank you for that. So let's move on to what is going on locally here in SAS. But what's going on with Kate over at Harborview, Master Chief? Hey, so Kate and her team over there just won uh, some awards for Best in the Pacific. And uh, they, they won it in two categories. Uh, you know, we're small. And, uh, and I do see people, you know, it, it's, it's hard to please everybody. I see some ice comments about this, but Kate and her team over there are doing a great job to, uh, to, to give us some good service over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love it over there. I mean, it's right across the street. I go there all the time. And it's like, where else are you going to really get American food? Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, this base is the only option, really. Absolutely. And, um, I mean, I like it over there. They also just redid the menu and everything. And uh, there's a lot of great stuff on there. So everyone should go check that out. Yeah, Kate Definitely. told me she's redoing the menu about every three months. And uh, it came up on, on a, a nice comment, so they're also posting that menu online. Mm -hmm. So we've got tons of things here to help keep you guys busy when you're on Liberty, starting with uh, Hostin Bosch, got 99 Islands, things like that. Yeah, so uh, this week, you know, this week, instead of talking about MWR stuff, because I noticed that uh, the DJs talk about MWR a lot. I just want to throw a couple things. If you're new in Sasebo, or if you're even if you're, you're you've been in Sasebo for a while and you just haven't got out, you know we got Host and Bosch out there. It's about seven thousand yen for an adult and six thousand for uh, a, a youth. Uh, we got Ninety Nine Islands, a pirate sightseeing ship that's about fourteen hundred yen, uh, and four. Let's see, yeah, fourteen hundred yen. Uh, you go over there. That usually happens on Tuesday. And there's also an aquarium. In that same in that same place, and all that's loca located out you know, near Kashimai Cho, mm -hmm. and then Bio Park is uh, I've been there several times. It's always great for the kids, uh, especially the little spider monkeys that jump on you and they try and take your stuff. And then the last thing, you know, I, I'm not sure if everybody knows about this uh, for for uh, in Japan, but we do have some uh, AMC passenger terminals uh, here in Japan, which gives you the ability to do space A travel, and so. Kadena, Iwakuni, and Yakota all have terminals that, uh, if you take a look at their Facebook page and you type in, you know, each of their each of their uh, Yakota passenger terminal, Iwakuni passenger terminal, you can see where their flights go, and uh, you may be able to fly there for a cheaper price and get yourself back to the United States or somewhere for a, for a better price than spending a thousand dollars on a ticket. No, that's so true. Uh, what is it? One of my friends he used to be stationed up in, I believe, Misawa or something like that, mm -hmm. and he had to go home on emergency leave, and he ended up being able to jump on one of these flights, and he went all the way over to Washington for like $50. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely go out and take advantage of that while you can. You know, we're out here in the Pacific, so you just got to hop on a plane. You can be in a completely different country, and, you know, just go out and explore while you're here. Yeah. So we have a little bit of time left, and we are on the last topic, which is our ICE comments. Yep, and so this, this I, I always talk, sometimes, uh, the last couple of shows, I talked about some negative ones, so 
I just want to throw some shout outs there for a couple sailors. So MA2 Ducksworth, he got a shout out on, uh, on ice, on the ice comment system for just doing an awesome job on the gate. It, it happened around, uh, on the 6th of July event and the gate was really, really busy and Ducksworth, Duck, Ducksworth worked really hard to keep the traffic down and maintain his cool during that time. Uh, and then we got MASN Anderson also, Stan and Gate and Hario, and uh, one of the newer family members came through and asked a bunch of questions, and he took the time to provide information to, uh, to the family member, and she was really appreciative about that. And then the, the, the last shout-out is uh, LS1 Frankie over at FMAT. Uh, LS1 Frankie was coming back one night and saw some uh, sailors who were stumbling a little bit and had some troubles, and uh, Frankie helped them get back to the ship and the ice comet even said he helped get the shipmate to his rack. And then the last thing I got here is a negative one a little bit, but uh, somebody made a comment about stop signs and uh, and how they were they were just a suggestion. And so I just want to let you guys know I, I think that person may have been con uh, confusing stop signs with yield signs. Uh, for all stop signs on base and off base, you are required to make a full stop uh, before you roll through those things. And uh, being a former MA, a full stop to uh, the way that I always defined a full stop is when I almost I practically felt my car like rock back a little bit because I've pressed the brakes hard enough to bring the car to a full stop. So for those of you who think that stop signs are uh, are a suggestion, they're not a suggestion, and, and you will get a ticket from security. If uh, if they catch you rolling the stop signs, mm -hmm. I had no idea you were an MA, Master Chief. Yeah, before I was an MA. There you go. Well, uh, yeah, and obviously, you know, you don't want to lose your license out here, which I mean, it's pretty easy to do. The only reason you even have a license in the first place is because CFAS allows you to. So don't take advantage of that. You don't want those points on your license. But hey, anyways, that does it for CMC morning chat, guys. We are basically out of time. But hey, don't worry. We're going to be doing some more of them. I don't believe next week because you're going to be gone, right? Yeah, I'll be gone next week. So we'll probably pick up with the following week. If I can. There you go. The following week, we will definitely let you guys know. But hey, guys, taking us to the top of the hour, here is Kiss with a Fist by Florence and the Machine.